Hey y'all, welcome back. Well today's video is going to be on the Spy Point Flex. I have a couple of these out now. I have the standard Flex, the original 33 megapixel, and I also have a 36 out in the field. So I've got some good testing on them and uh, I'm going to do an unboxing, show you what comes in the pack, show you how to go through this and format the card, and uh, I'll compare these to the micro LTs that I've been using for three years now. So y'all stay tuned. Now, used to, I would put my cameras out, regular cell cameras out in July. I didn't leave them out from the end of the turkey season through the summer. I just didn't leave them out. And I was big on wild game innovations. They was cheap and easy to use. I've had several different brands, if you've seen videos in the past, and used those cameras would average maybe two years, three years through the abuse of the cold weather and stuff. Um, I've tried Moultrie, I've tried a lot of cameras. So far, what I found out is I like the spy points. Uh, the Micro LTE, they're great cameras. You get two packs, they last a couple years, two or three years. I've got one that's three years old that I just took down the other day. Uh, great cameras, transmission plans are good. I'm really happy with them, but I have lost a few. And uh, some of it was due to ants getting in them. Uh, I had one that was a farm wire failure and I got it back working. But I actually have two of these 33 megapixels. This is the 33 megapixel flex, and I have a 36 out in the field I just put out the other night. I'll show some pictures at the end of this video off the 36 and the 33. But uh, I wanna do the video on this because I got a real good uh, feedback from the setup videos for the LTEs. When people started throwing them out right before deer season, they went to that video and uh, I got a lot of good feedback. Of course, you're gonna get a little negative feedback but I got a lot of good feedback on it. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna do 100% unboxing and show you what's in this pack, what comes with it. Okay, so this is the 33 megapixel. It's all carriers, which any of them will work. Don't believe the rumors what AT&T and stuff. AT&T and Verizon will work just the same as the all carriers. I think Spy Point's actually going to an all carrier package on everything now. But anyway, we'll get this opened up. You get your instructions, how to set up your user guide, quick start guide. You have your camera. And in the very bottom, you'll have your strap. So we'll set that out of the way. <clears throat> you got this little rubber <clears throat> holder here to protect the threads on your, um, for your antenna where it kind of like your old, like the old coax would go. I always leave the rubber piece on it. It seems to help seal it because I have had issues with ants getting in the micro LTE and some of them got in around that port uh, and some of them got around the battery tray. You're gonna take and remove that. Go ahead and open your camera up. As you can see here, it's got a little bit different pack than what the other ones do. And then do not remove blah 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 anyway you're going to remove this the first thing i like to do i like to use and i'll put this link in the description below i always buy these in twos i use 32 gigabyte or i use 64 gigabyte i love the sandist ultra that's what i run in this video camera that you're watching right now and i really like these um you can go up to i think a 200 yeah you can go from a 2 gigabyte to 512 gigabyte it's got to be a class 10 but these are just cheaper to buy this way so we'll open this up and go ahead and get these out you're only going to need one per camera but i like buying them in two in case something happens go ahead and insert you can see here it shows how it's supposed to go in so you're going to take your card turn it upside down go ahead and get that out of the way now, for your quick start guide, as you will see, they've got steps here. First, if you don't, never had a spy point, you're gonna have to download this app, whether it's a, you know, whether it's a, a, an Apple or an Android, this will be the two that you'll use. You'll go through and create your account, and then you're gonna install the antenna just as I showed you. You're gonna put your SD card in. Now, before we get too carried away, battery choice. 
totally up to you. These cameras do come set up for the DC on the back. You can run a, um, a, a solar panel, but you have to have the Spy Point battery pack that's the lithium ion to go in it. Now, as far as regular batteries, this is what I use. I've used Duracell. I've used a lot of different kinds. I get better battery life out of these. I don't know why, but the Energizer Max just seems to be better and last longer. I buy them in 36 pack at Walmart, I mean at uh, Home Depot, or if you got a Sam's Club, you can get them even cheaper. But anyway, it's gonna take eight batteries. So we'll open this pack up, cause I'm fixing to hit the trail and put a lot of cameras, change batteries on a lot of cameras. Go ahead and get you eight out. And as you can see with the battery pack, plus and minus, so, just load it. These kind of snap in and cradle one another. That's another thing I like about this one versus um, the micro LTs. The, it seems like this little holder that rolls over keeps these batteries from rolling around where the LT pack doesn't. These really fit in here good. So you'll have your pluses going up, pluses going down, pluses going up, pluses going down. So you got your battery pack filled as it states on here turn on camera all leds will begin to look so it kind of jumps right here something that it it doesn't show in your setups that i wanted to call out in the video you still have to use your code in the bottom to set your camera up so i'm gonna go to your phone go to your spy point app you're gonna go to cameras you're gonna hit the plus that's gonna bring up select model you go ahead and hit the scroll down select this is a flex 33 which is considered to be the regular flex so as you can see i've got flex picked hit done next now it says scan so all you're gonna do is hold it up to where you see your qr code Hit scan, it's gonna grab your camera. As you can see, it marked it. It asks if I have a referral, I do not. Um, I use a referral to my uh, friends back and forth to get free stuff or get stuff knocked, you know, knocked off. But in this case, I'm just doing it for the video. So activate my device. Now, it says congratulations your device can now be turned on. So what you have to remember at this point is go back to your instructions and it will tell you, turn your camera on and then immediately hold the format button for five seconds. Format LED will turn green. So what you're gonna do, get ready. You've got that in. You're gonna take your battery pack that has your arrows pointing up lay in so snap into place that's ready now we're going to turn camera on and we're going to go straight over here as soon as that goes on we're going to hold this button for five seconds so on hold one two three four five and you send a green light go off and then start flashing it is formatting that card so we're going to set this camera up here until it takes a picture so i'm going to go ahead and shut it and just set it right here so it may take up to a few minutes to get this device to react i have it right here maybe with me talking it'll it'll realize that i am in my basement at my toolbox uh trapping sheds not done to be doing videos yet but anyway uh we will be doing a lot of videos in that shed but back to the point while this is doing it while this is uh getting ready to take a picture this the micro lts are great cameras i love them i love the cell links that you can go to old style cameras um but this whole format issue or a format option with the flex makes life a whole lot easier when it comes to hurrying up and fixing something in the field not to leave sent down because that's the whole purpose of the simple trail cameras you put batteries in it you put an sd but you got to go to the field and check them the only time i want to be going 
to the field is to put maybe corn out during the summer and feed the deer or putting our high protein stuff out or reapplying salt licks or whatnot when I'm in that area, maybe changing stands. But a 32 gigabyte card lasted me in my LTE uh, camera, my micro. It lasted me from January, oh, we're already getting pictures. Let me grab my phone. So in January of 2020, I got two micro LTE cameras for Christmas. That 32 gigabyte card, the exact same card I just showed you, lasted. I never took the camera out of the field. It's been out in the hot summers. Like I told you in the video, I was going to push it. They've been out all summer, through the fall, through the spring, through all the cold weather, and that SD card did not run out for right at two years and four months, five months. That says something for the quality of the camera and for the, um, you know, basically the SD card, how long it lasts. Because a lot of people are wanting to go get a 500 gigabyte card. That's great. And I would suggest that buying a real expensive ultra disc card and putting in it, if you're going to use the, um, you know, if you're going to use the cell, uh, solar panels or, or whatnot, you know, use their, their battery packs and stuff. So, uh, anyway, we'll go in here and look, see new flex. There it is. It's already showed up. Oh, I already have it on there. It's been two minutes. And the first photo, well, it shows it's on there, but it ain't transferred photo yet. And another thing about Spot Point, if you have issues transmitting photos through, a lot of times you're you're not always signed out of your um, of your app. So what you just need to do is basically, if you've got an Android or a a, a phone, you just or a, I'm sorry, an Apple phone, you will just scroll up get rid of it, you know, send, uh, send it on the trash and then go back in and hit spy point again. It will come back up and then it resets all of your camera features. So we'll go on here and see what we've got. Yeah, we got, we only got 25% signal in here. Now, one thing that I do want to share with you, you're going, if you're going to be putting this out in front of corn or are you gonna put corn out in front of it or you're gonna be cutting some kind of bait and it's gonna get a lot of high traffic deer coming through you need to go to your settings and you will need to change your trigger speed you'll go to image capture so you go to image capture and right here they're gonna have multi shot or one you can hit it you can hit it and it comes there at the bottom and you can scroll it up one to three put it on one then you're gonna go up here to motion delay, the next one up. You're gonna hit the arrow key on motion delay. Put your down here. Motion delay, and at the bottom, it's gonna let you scroll. 15 to 30 minutes is my pick. If you've got it in the woods, just in the woods, on a trail, just observing, then you could probably go for the single, you know, at, for it to reset every minute, which will trigger, you know, something's got to trigger it for it to go off. A lot of people are confused that that thing just goes off on its own. It doesn't. And you can set the sensitivity on these cameras to where if something tri trigger speed, you can set all of that to where it can be faster. It can be multi-shot. But if you don't want to eat up battery life and you don't want to just fill your app full of pictures that, you know, just don't make any sense or they're all the same deer then set it to you can put one minute on a trail but if you're going to put it on any kind of food source any kind of food plot anything that they're coming out or there'll be a bunch of deer come into then i suggest put it on 15 or 30 minutes and the reason being if you are on the insiders club you can run as many cameras as you want for 99 dollars a month and you get 250 pictures per camera a month but if you put it on one minute, it's going to take, I, I did this with my Flex 36. I put it into the field, set it, did not, I left it on one minute. I went, I come home, went to bed. I had 250 pictures on my corn pile in one night and I had to reset it for the next month. So I've got to wait to see any pictures off that. So just think ahead, go through your settings, set it to medium, picture quality 
you know, keep it on all the factory settings. That's what's worked for me. But make sure you set that thing on any food source, multi deer coming in. You're going to want that every 15 minutes to 30 seconds, 30, 30 minutes. Now, when you set that, you will actually have to hit save up here at the top. So I'll change this one. So you go to motion light. I'm going to go to 20 minutes, hit done. Now, just because it says it's done up here in the corner, there is a save button. You have to hit save for that to save that to the camera. We're going to go to the field and set this up. <clears throat> and we're going to have our 36, our 33 megapixels. It's taking a picture right now. As you can see it blinking, 36 megapixels, or this is a 33 megapixel. You'll see what these pictures look like. So I've got 300 pound of corn, some sugar beets and salt, and me and Kimberly is going to head to the lease and put this on the corn pile, and then you'll be able to see the deer. Uh, I'll put the pictures at the end of this video. So y'all stay tuned. Well, as you can see here, this is... I've got my flex camera back there on a tree. This is one of the normal setups that I had told you that where you'll have to change your settings from like one minute for it to trigger. It only, you know, it takes a picture and then it resets itself one minute to take the next picture. And if a deer triggers it, it takes it. A situation like this is where you're gonna wanna do it every 15, 20, 30 minutes. Cause when the first deer comes in, you're gonna get a picture and then usually more deer come in. So on this side, we have, there's 150 pound of corn. I have some sugar beets on this. And I also have a pile of sugar beets in between that and the salt. That's an established salt lick that I just freshened up. Uh, it has a um, Redmond Trophy Rock in it and it's got iodized table salt. I got 25 pound bags and put it in there. They don't hit that as much during the, the summer as they do in the spring, but we try to keep it fresh and it's supposed to rain tomorrow and it'll really soak into the ground. But anyway, uh, I have this, I'll zoom in. I have this um, 33 megapixel flex. It's been out, I'll put some pictures on here of it. Uh, as you can see, it's mounted to one of the uh, screw-in, I think it's a muddy screw-in uh, tree post. I can move it either way, uh, up and down, side to side. You can adjust it. We'll go over and get a better look so at it. So you can see here, I've got this on. Uh, this this mount has been on this tree for a long time. The tree's actually growing around the mount almost. But uh, the flexes have where you can screw into the back. And uh, the signal's really good on, up here. It's on top of a ridge. As Y'all seen me take the nine-pointer up here. But we've got a, this food plot's pretty much run down. We've got to replant this year. And there's a big C goes down that way to a shooting house. But anyway, that's my flex one of my flex setups right here over this so we're going to jump into side by side and go do a complete uh strap and put um put one out another area. now this is going to be the spot where we're going to set it up so as you can see this is a uh, where i put my watering trough last year i did a video on it and uh this is real close to my stand that you've seen in a lot of the videos so the idea of this is I'm gonna put the spy point over here on this tree behind me and go ahead and put my corn. It's a great way to take inventory. Uh, this camera won't be in the sun like a lot of them. So uh, it'll have real good shade in here and covered up. So I'll get all of this set up the way I normally set it up. And then uh, I'll show you how, the, uh, how I set the flex up and what level I put it or how high I put it up. Well, I've got my corn and everything's set up back here. And of course the elevation of the land is gonna tell you how high you need to put it. But I always like hanging my cameras about hip high. So if I step up to the camera and it's good and level, I like them about hip high. It seems like I catch them when they're, the, their head's up, I can still see the top of the rack. And when they've got their head down feeding, I can see it also. So you're gonna take your little strap, run it out, pull it off. Now this is threaded. You thread it through the back, make sure your buckle's facing out, and then just thread it right through the back like so. And you've seen the other camera, it was screwed into, into a tree mount. So, put this back here high. Pull it tight. 
get it lined up. And then I'm going to take my access and just wrap it around just like so. If you need a little angle down, you can put it right behind the camera, give you a little bit extra. And then uh, use our roll it up like so, just like that. Tuck it in behind it. And flip it open. Make sure your door's got plenty of movement. If you got to turn it on, flip it on. You'll see you've got cards formatted, batteries are good, and uh, everything, it's setting itself up now to take a picture. And the way I have this pointed, so you take hip height, I have my trough. The water trough is right here. And then of course, there's my corn, and I have um, my sugar beets over there. So this is what it would look like when the deer walks up. As you can see, it's taking a picture now, you can see that green light. It just took a picture. So it's sending now. And that is basically my normal setup. Um, that would be over corn or over the bait for the summer. We're not allowed to bait in Tennessee, so this has to be up 10 days for any season. So even if it's the velvet hunt or the antler hunt, antlerless hunt, during, or the antler hunt in August, uh, we have to have it up 10 days before. If it's right before season, we come down here and sweep it all up, but usually I time it to where they use it up and it's gone. But anyway, this is my normal setup. I've really enjoyed the spy point cameras and I wanna make sure everybody knows they have never sent me a camera that I didn't pay for. I'm not sponsored. I'm not affiliated in any way. It's just I like the ease of use of these cameras and how good they've done for me, you know, how good they perform for me. And um, you, know, you can't hardly beat the price. And it's really nice having it right there on your phone anytime a deer, coyote, or whatever walks by. Or even when you have a, you know, human activity, it sends it. So anyway, if you like what we're doing, please subscribe and like. Hit that bell for notifications so that you won't ever miss any content that we've got, that we put out. And, uh, you know, leave your comments down below. Anything I have described in this video will be in the link below. And as always, God bless. We'll see you on the next video. Can't wait for deer season 2023.